This video is sponsored by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash scale modeling to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a professional website, online store, or portfolio. It's easy to claim a domain, create a custom site that matches your style, and brings your ideas to life. All websites are optimized for mobile. Content automatically adjusts so your site looks great on any device. You can use customizable galleries to display images and videos in a unique way to completely match your style and bring it to your audience. Every Squarespace website and online store comes with a suite of integrated features and useful guidelines to help maximize prominence among search results. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Head to squarespace.com slash scale modeling to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code scale modeling. To start the build off, we're going to check the entire body to see where all the mold lines are. Then of course, mark these off with a black permanent marker to give a clear indication of where they exactly are. So when I'm starting to remove them, I don't uh, potentially forget some. And also for the black marker to help out as a sort of guide coat, because when I start sanding, of course, the black will still slowly start to disappear. You can then still see a bit of the mold line. And once all the black is gone, so should the mold line be as well. Before we do any sanding though, I'm going to start off with scribing out all of the panel lines. Specifically here in the front area around that bumper and the hood where they meet up, the panel line is really shallow and just after a couple coats of paint that will entirely disappear. So I'm just going to go over it with the scriber a couple of times carefully, start scribing the initial line and then going deeper and deeper to give it a really nice pronounced line. If you've seen the unboxing, you are probably aware that this is still a prototype kit, so it's not finalized yet. So some of these areas that need improving are not going to be in the final kit, of course, or at least not in the same way they are in this kit. So once all of the panel lines have been scribed out, most of them were fine and didn't really need any retouching, I could move on to removing all of those mold lines. I started off with a sanding stick which is nice and rigid and should just remove the high spots and get a nice flat finish underneath. Once that was completed, I moved on to a 400 grit to get those rougher grit scratches out from the sanding sticks. And then finally, I ended up with a 600 grit to sand the entire body in order to prepare it for the primer stage. The final step before paint is removing all of these sprues that are still in here and the supported areas which might be a bit weaker and could potentially be damaged. So these were cut out and then cleaned up a little bit. Then the rest of the body was cleaned off as well. Removed all of the dust with a couple of brushes and then put it onto a Tamiya spray stand. I will leave links in the description down below for a lot of the products that I use, so feel free to check those out. And I could then move on to priming. If you haven't seen my most recent video, you're probably not aware that I got a new airbrush. I decided to go with a Mr. Hobby, also known as Kraos, and this is their PS290. This has a trigger underneath and also a nice big handle for your hand to grip onto and is a lot more comfortable in the hand in the long term. One of the other reasons I also wanted to try this is that it comes with two different types of nozzles, at least this specific one has a round 0.5 tip and also a fan type of nozzle which gives a lot wider of a spray pattern and it should increase uh, the easeability of use for clear coat and also obtain a really nice finish pretty easily. Now I'm yet to test that out. I'm still struggling a bit here and there, figuring out which settings I'm using. This was actually the first time I used this airbrush, so it doesn't really sound all that well as I'm still tri trying to test it out and figure out the correct settings. But in the end, it turned out fine. It needed a bit of adjustment, but that is not too terrible for a first time using any airbrush. After applying a couple coats of primer, I did notice that there were still a couple of panel lines that needed to be improved and also a couple of the rivets uh, that hold on the white body supposedly weren't really as visible as I wanted them to be after all of the sanding that I'd done earlier. So those needed to be drilled out and I will be replacing those with actual uh, metal rivets in a later stage of the build. So I'm just firstly marking out that center with a uh, one millimeter uh, or 0.1 millimeter uh, sharp pointed bit that is available for these engraving blades and then once those are all center punched I can drill those out with the smallest drill bit I had.
After doing all of the rivets, I moved on to correcting some more of these panel lines. And also I noticed that there were still a couple of mold lines left. So I used some 600 grit sandpaper to sand that out and also give the rest of the body a nice scuff up as well. And then applied another couple coats of gray primer. And of course, while I'm painting the rest of the body, all of the other smaller components like the mirrors, wings, and a couple of the bumper pieces were primed and painted at the same time. A couple coats of primer later and it was time to apply the color. I was debating which color I wanted to be painting this one. I've seen a couple videos from RDBLA if you're not familiar with them. Feel free to look them up, they have some fun videos about all the cars that they modify and wrap. And they also had a couple of these Lamborghinis in. One was in red and it has been blue as well, uh, various different colors. The blue looks really, really good. But since I've just painted a car in blue and I don't want to be repeating the same colors over and over again shortly one after another, I figured I'd just go with the red as that looked really good uh, on this one too. And it is also the color of the prototype. So I figured it would go nicely with the style of this build. The red is covering really, really easily. So a second coat was applied shortly after and it was then pretty much covered. I did decide to go for a third coat of color just to be absolutely sure and then let it sit and cure for about an hour before I moved on to applying the glossy clear coat. So I applied a first initial coat with the fan spray nozzle on this one and I didn't really have the setting dialed up all that nicely so that didn't go really really well. I let that sit and cure for about five minutes and then uh, switched over to the normal nozzle and then applied another coat. Now since the first coat wasn't really all that smooth, the second coat wasn't really that smooth either and the third and final coat did smooth it out mostly but it was already pretty much gone uh, as far as a nice smooth finish went and it did have a lot of trash in it somehow as well, probably because of some improper cleaning of the airbrush. So it's pretty much all my fault, but nonetheless, we will fix it. So some more clear was applied. I then let that sit and cure for a couple of days and could move on to fixing it and polishing it out. As you can see, there is a lot of trash in the hood and also in the roof and all the other flat areas. So that needs to be fixed. A friend of mine pointed these out from AliExpress. I will leave a link in the description down below. These are 3000 grit sanding sponges that can mount onto the sticky back stuff uh, thing shank that can be put into your drill or your rotary tool. You've seen me use that a couple times before with the polishing, the machine polishing videos, but it now also has a nice sanding pad with 3000 grit, which makes it a real breeze to sand the clear coat down nice and smooth. Now be careful on those edges as it can burn quickly through all that clear coat and potentially ruin it all. So be really aware of what you're doing and take your time. I'm just gonna sand down all of the flat areas and all the other areas with some imperfections and make it nice and smooth with a 3000 grit. After completing the roof, I of course did the other panels that needed some uh, adjustment as well and could then start on polishing. I took out the three stage polishing set I have from Gravity Colors and went to town with a variety of uh, polishing bits, uh, some foam pads, some microfiber pads and even some wool pads. 
going through all the stages, making it nice and glossy. If you want more in-depth videos about that, feel free to check out my how-to section. I have multiple videos on polishing and machine polishing specifically. And again, I will leave links in the description for all of these tools that I used. So the first stage was completed and it's already pretty much corrected. I did go through all the other stages as well to get out even finer scratches and make it even glossier. But I'm not going to bother showing you that as it's probably unseeable on video. So I'm just going to show a couple photos of the before with a couple of the dust spots in it for the roof and the hood too. And then of course move over to the sanding stage after the 3000 grit. It's all nice and flat. All those areas have been removed. And then of course after the polishing it is nice and glossy again. And here's also a quick side by side. This was of course the before, it's a bit hazy and with a lot of dust and after the polishing it's nice, smooth and glossy again. 